1472. This one I'm going to have an air conditioner. And the idea of the air conditioner is, if you guys know that our, the way that we feel about temperature is not necessarily has to do with temperature per se, right? Our perception has to do with other things. Like that's the reason why if we touch a metal and a little piece of paper at the same temperature, we might think that the metal is cooler. That's because of the um, thermal conductivity. Likewise, if we if we are in an environment that has more it's more moisture, if there's more moisture, it's the relativity that it is greater. It's cooler for us, right? It, it feels cooler. All right. So one of the ideas is that the air conditioner, it um, Sorry, it's, if it's drier, it feels cooler. Well, the, the idea that the air conditioner is that it removes some of the moisture in the air, so that we have a cooler feeling because of the relative humidity being lower. So this is a classic air conditioner problem. And the idea is that we want, instead the previous one we wanted to heat up the environment, this one we want to cool down the environment, or at least cool down in the sense of the feeling that we humans have, perception that we have over the environment. So air enters a window um, air conditioner at one atmosphere. We're good to go, one atmosphere. 32 Celsius and 70% relative humidity. So first state is defined and mass flow rate of two cubic meters per minute. And it leaves as a saturated air at 15 Celsius. Part of the moisture at the air condenses during the process and is also removed at 50 Celsius. Determine the rate of Heat and moisture removal. Okay, so let's let's draw this out. So let's see my beautiful air conditioner here. Okay, and then that's my AC. And we have going into this AC air. So this air is at air. And this air is at 32 Celsius. It's also at 70% humidity. humidity, and it's coming in at two meters cubed per minute. Okay, and then it goes through the sky and it leaves now the saturated air, saturated air, saturated air, and a temperature of 15 Celsius. Okay. And it also during this process, we have moisture being removed. So we have water not here. We have water being removed. And water is also being removed at 50. Okay, so we have water at 50. If this is water, it's being removed. That means that this is the um, ideal case for us to grab properties as a saturated liquid, right? This is. Okay, cool. Now, we have two properties for this side here. Good, we have, uh, all we need to find entities on the bottom there. And we also have heat being removed from the system, right? So heat being removed from the system, that's the whole idea of the conditions we have to get out earlier. Now, one thing that is important to note is, there's one more property happening that we can grab off of this side here. All right, so this is at 15, that's the temperature. There's one more thing that we can grab of the cyclometric property that we can grab off this guy here. I would like you guys to take two minutes to think about what that is. The other thing that I want to say is that the thing that we're being asked for is, okay, determine the rate of, so we want this guy here, so the thing that I asked is what they're asking about. They want Q out, the rate of heat to move, we also want the mass flow rate of water to be able to this guy here. So, that's the two things that we'll be there. Okay, so I'll we'll give you guys a couple of minutes to tell me what is the, oh my God, all right. So what is the other property that we can grab, other second property that we can grab for this state here? So yeah, as some of you guys figured out, the relative humidity on this guy here has to be 100%, right? Pretty much by definition, because if it's a saturated air, that literally means that the next droplet of water that I put into this air 
will not be withheld, right? It cannot be withheld. So we're, we'll reach the saturation limit, right? So that means the relative humidity is 100%. That's very important for you guys to be able to construct by yourselves because it's not given, but you need that to be able to set, have two setting properties to define these states, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off by defining uh, states one, two, and three. Okay, and note that I have all the things that I need to define these states. And we're gonna use the calculator again, so I don't have to show you again because we just did on the previous problem. So let's do, go ahead and do state one. State one will have, um, um, 70% of the and we are at 32, 32 Celsius. So with that, I can go ahead and do one, and I can extract that my entropy one will be 86.5. We reduce the program of right there. My omega one will be 21 and one grams of water for every kilogram of right air. And my specific volume one is zero point four zero point zero x. And my state um, three and state three I know two things, but I know my relative humidity is hundred percent and I know my temperature is fifty Celsius. So same thing, thirty one. H3 is 42. I'm going to here, and my omega 3 is 10.7 grams per kilogram of right air. Grams of water per kilogram of right air. I don't need the um, specific volume because the specific volume I'm going to use just like last time to calculate my mass flow rate, right? Because I have this guy here. And I have this guy here, so I can combine those two formations to find mass flow. You can start by doing that. The only other thing I wanted to do prior is to make sure that we also are acknowledging our state two, which this case is just water, right? And our water, we can um, grab H2, which will be equal to uh, H of the saturated liquid at 50 Celsius. And that is 63. Of water. Okay, this one is just for water because our mass is for water. Okay, um, so let's find the mass flow rate one. Um, let's acknowledge the fact that there's no snow here. No, let's do this one. No. Uh, here in state one has to be equal to the amount of air on state two. In state three, sorry, state two. All right, because if you look at this drawing, right, the only thing that's leaking down here is water. Right, we're not losing air here. So whatever mass of air we have income in here has to be the same as goes all the way through. So that means mathematically that m one equals m two. Okay, so let's do, uh, let's find out what this M1 is, because we know M1 will just be the ratio between the specific volume one divided, oh, sorry, the volume flow rate one over the volume, so that's gonna be uh, two meters cubed per minute divided by the Meters cubed per kilogram. That's going to give me two pound no, out, two point two three eight kilograms per minute. That's my mass flow rate one and mass flow rate two. Um, what else? What else? What else? Okay, I can again do a little energy balance and do a mass balance. We're going to do all those things again, uh, just like last time. Let's start with our. Um, doesn't really matter. Start with our water mass balance, I guess. 
So this doing sections. Right? This is one section here. We do this now. And now let's do. Works hit two and a half. Hit two and a half. We're going to be looking at our AC, and then our AC has some water coming in and three outlets of water. And this is my M1, one, then three, three, and then that's the one. That means that. Whatever mass of water is initially there has to account for the mass of water that's leaving on the third state plus the mass of water that's leaving on the saturated liquid. So the mass of water equals M1 again, this is equal to the other side will be omega 1 minus omega 3 instead of. Um, Three minus four, because now we are instead of adding water, we're moving water, right? So that's pretty much it for our mass balance. Note that we have everything we need. We have omega one, we have um, omega three, we have mass flow rate of um, air, so mass flow rate of water is quite trivial. It's going to be the uh, two point two thirty eight times. Omega one, one point one minus ten point seven. So the rate of water removal is about 23 grams of water every minute. Okay, so that's rate of water removal. And for to find the Q, the energy removal, we'll just do the same thing with energy balance. As simple as that. Okay, just plug your units as you're going because that's where you guys go wrong. Okay, let's have a look quickly about these two units before we move on. So the first one that's going to be Kilogram of air per minute. We're multiplying that by grams of water or kilograms of air. Kilograms of air, kilograms of air, and then we're going to have grams of water per minute. And that's like grams of water per minute. Uh, shouldn't that kilograms per minute be 0.0233? Um, sure. Yes, thanks. Thank you. That's right. Cool. All right. Um, so we have the mass flow rate of water, the rate removal of water that was asked of us, and now we can find the mass flow rate, uh, sorry, the energy removal, right? Q out. So, same thing, energy balance. Let's look at our AC one more time. So what do we have on our C AC uh, energy-wise? We have the entropy of the first state coming through, and then it's leaving as the entropy of the third state. That's the third state. We also have the entropy of water leaving here. We have QL leaving here. Okay, so all the energy, energy cannot be created, so all the energy from the other state has to be coming from one. That's going to be three. So take water. Okay, so if I want to have this in power, multiply by the mass flow rates. So Q becomes rate. Simple. What are we after? We're after Q, so I can solve for Q. That means that my Q box will be M. One each one minus m three h three minus m water h water. The m three and m one are the same, right? The air is not 
losing like water is. So M1 H1 minus H3 minus mass of water. We have everything we need, just literally just plug and play. Well, we can do that. That's the mass flow of water, that's 2.338 kilograms per minute. H1 is whatever that was, 86.5. Um, H3 is 42. Mass flow of water. And energy of water is sixty two no eighty two. As easy as that. So let's just have um, a look on the units. So this first guy here, so the first guy here is kilograms of air per minute. We're multiplying that by kilojoules per kilogram of air. And then we're subtracting that by oops, kilogram of water. per minute. We have 63 kilojoules per kilogram of water. So kilojoules per minute on that side. Kilojoules per minute on the other side is good. We can send them up as I need kilojoules per minute. 